How did you start arguing with Nira Tandon about Libya? So Nira, <laughs> Nira, I think is a very polarizing figure. I think that's um, true. within the with, within the Democratic Party, um, but I think, and obviously she's been an advisor to Hillary for a long time, and she was one of the main Bernie bashers, uh, main bashers of the left, main bashers of anyone who dared to criticize you know her queen Hillary Clinton. Um, but what was so telling or what is so telling about Nira and it, it even showed and after I tweeted and everything is she just immediately blocked me. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's this, this elitist group think that has like, okay, I don't know you, you're not in my circle. So your voice doesn't matter. I'm just going to block it out. Right. And that's right. really that ideology is what, um, Hillary's campaign was kind of running on, right? Like once Bernie was out of the primary, um, it was kind of like, all right, whatever those progressive issues Bernie was pushing for, whatever they're done, we're going to run on frack. We're going to run on fracking. We're going to run on, you know, just improve Obamacare. We're going to run on, or we can't even get to a $15 minimum wage, you know, Hillary Clinton gets $500,000 for a one hour speech, but you're, you don't deserve $15 an hour for honest work. Like all that type of stuff. They kind of just threw that to the yeah. side and thought, well, you know, Trump's on the other side, so you have to vote for me. Um, and so just that, 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 that mode of thinking is something that I think she embodies. And also just that whole wing of the party, um, that centrist wing of the party, elite wing of the party kind of embodies. And I think she's a per perfect personification for that. And you also, I mean, you pulled this thing based off of a WikiLeaks uh, mm -hmm. revealed, you know, document that basically she was talking right. and, you know, whatever, I guess kind of flippantly, not in a policy setting, but like essentially that the Libyans should pay us back for overthrowing Gaddafi uh, with oil. Mm -hmm. Now, right. I don't know, like, does she mean like the Libyans that now are openly buying and selling human beings and restored slave markets? Right. Like, I mean, they might have some <laughs> capital to throw around. Does she mean the like, you know, the warlord in one part of the country or the government that's tentatively or, you know, the different right. factions that are fighting proxy war between, you know, Turkey and Russia right now? I don't know who we're talking about, but. That kind of mindset, I, 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 it caught me one because again, it was it was a deep catch. You know, that isn't like yeah. just a standard like, you know, oh, you say this, but you know, this poll number is different or whatever. That really matters, yeah. you know. And also, yeah. that was something that people said about Iraq all the time. I mean, that actually used to be like a, an acceptable liberal position. I think Dick yeah. Durbin used to say that, like, hey, we went in there, we did this job, they should give us the oil. Not even considering right. like, well, nobody asked you to, in, you know, invade or, you know, very few people did. And you actually, you know, killed a lot of people, caused a lot of problems by doing these things. Right. Yeah, exactly. So the destabilization of the Middle East, um, which has been obviously caused by United States foreign policy over the last few decades, has been something that has just completely bankrupted our country. And not to speak of the thousands, if not millions of lives that not only have been affected, but people that have died um, overseas. And then you have people like Nir Tannen talking about repayment through oil, which, like you said, all these different factions are in Libya right now. So it's really not any type of repayment. It's just we're just going to take those resources um, from that country, uh, which is really why we wanted to overthrow Gaddafi in the first place is like why we want to overthrow any um, dictator, I put that in air quotes, <laughs> um, because they're trying to nationalize the oil and, and reap those profits for their own people, which is why you see why we're trying to, they were trying to overthrow um, the Venezuelan government and why, you know, they're trying to, you know, overthrow the, the Iranian government, right? So these are very, and, and it's like the same playbook, right? And so now we see, like you can't, before they can do that, they could kind of work in back rooms and back channels, but really through the rise of social media and shows like yours and other and opinion media sources, people are actually getting real news that, you know, you won't see on, on the corporate media channel. So now we can actually see that. And now we actually have a president that will just go on TV and say, yeah, we were going in there to take the oil. Right. Right. And so it's almost right. good that we can, we can see that at face value and then fight back against that. Um, and obviously Nira and, and them, those emails really revealed how they think, right? Because they have all these 
you know, back channels and ways of talking about stuff that don't reach the public because they've already modified the message so much. But we really got to have an inside look into how they think about these things and really just the corruption and rot that is that is within that elitist neoliberal um, group thing. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.